Good evening, Eduardo. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, how are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Tired? Uh, no, not much. It's more uh, stressing. Oh, stress. Um, uh, I imagine. It's uh, a lot of work or a heavy day at work? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe tomorrow's going to be better. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, let's hope so. Okay, so I just have you. Are you still working? Are you going to be participating today? I'm sorry. Are you still at work, or no? You're uh, free. No, I am free. Oh, I am nice. free. Okay, nice. Thank you so much for being on time. Uh, teacher, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in the in the uh, in the test in the final test um in this part and in the, the part two it's the same to the part three the answer the questions repeat uh, mm -hmm. yes it happens with the platform yes mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are some parts that are repeated and uh, some of other exercises are from uh, previous section exercises and they are the, exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, do you have any issue with them or were you able to solve them? Uh, no, no, I, I have a finish the platform. Okay, that's nice. I'm going to report that so that they can fix it maybe for next module or next <laughs> basic module. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have seen uh, um, in many cases uh, it, it, it it's the same. And sometimes the same exercise that we did, for example, in section four, and then in the final exam are the same exercises. So it doesn't have like, um, <laughs> it's like no nonsense, right? So, okay. but yes, it happened. So I'm going to report that. And also, uh, I think that um, by the end of the module, maybe on Friday, we have a Encuesta de Satisfacción. Ah, uh, okay. Uh -huh. Entonces, en la Encuesta de Satisfacción, eh, eso lo voy a volver a mencionar ya cuando esté la mayoría, porque es, una, es, es bien importante la Encuesta de Satisfacción la llenamos todos al mismo tiempo. Eh, pero hay una partecita donde pueden ustedes añadir sus comentarios, ¿verdad? Y ahí pueden agregar, pues, eh, ese, eh, que los ejercicios pues no sean tan repetitivos en la plataforma o cualquier cosa que puede ser algo para mejorar y algo positivo también para seguirlo implementando. Ahí lo pueden agregar también. Ah, ok, ok. Uh -huh, en las sugerencias. Excelente. Thank, okay. Thank you so much, Lilibet, Blanca Luz, uh, Corina, Natalie, and Eduardo. Welcome to today's class. Uh, we're going to start. I hope that you have had a very good day today. Okay, let me start sharing the screen. Uh, here we are. This is a slow dim. Okay, yesterday we were doing this exercise and we were going to use um, there is, there are plus prepositions, right? To make a, um, comparisons or to state the difference in these pictures. Did you write any sentences? Escribieron oraciones o no? You didn't have time, right? Uh, uh, mm, I don't write, but I can say some ones. Okay, you can say some sentences. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, in the picture one, the backpack is under the table. In the picture two, the backpack is in front of the table. Mm -hmm. 
That is correct. Good job. Um, anybody else? What else can you mention about those two pictures? Anything else that you can mention? Eh, what about the laptop or the lamp? Uh, yo hice una, porque la verdad no, no las hice, pero igual puedo intentar y de ahí hacerlas así como hizo Eduardo. Excellent. Uh, Go ahead. In the picture one, there is a book on the chair. In the picture two, the book is on the bed. In the picture one, the cell phone is in front of the clock. In the picture two, the cell phone is next to the clock. Yes, excellent. That's nice. Thank you so much, Lily, that your uh, sentences were correct. Very well done. And I think uh, we have uh, sunglasses. Do you know, can you see the sunglasses there? Hay unos lentes de sol. The sunglasses. Sunglasses, aunque solo sea un objetito, pero es, es una palabra plural. Entonces, se toma como plural. ¿Cómo quedaría la oración acerca de los lentes de sol? Mm. The, in the picture, one, the sunglasses next to the computer. In the picture two, the, 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 sorry, the sunglasses is in front of the computer. And the sunglasses is or are? Are, ah, sorry. <laughs> Very good, excellent. Are, are in front of the computer. <laughs> That's excellent, Lilibet. Thank you so much. Para eso les mencionaba los de los sunglasses, porque tendemos a pensar que es un singular, pero la palabra como sunglasses se toma como plural. Y otro ejemplo de ellos son los jeans. La palabra jeans o pants se toma como plural, aunque solo sea un, digamos, un item, un, un pantalón, ¿verdad? Pero como la palabra es plural, jeans. Pants, ellos y sunglasses son tomados como plural. Uh -huh. Y teacher, lo mismo aplica para los zapatos, supongo. Shoes. Fíjese que no, porque shoes también está si solo es un zapato. Shoe, uh, shoe. <ríe> o como se puede decir, pair of shoes. Si se un par, a pair of shoes. Ajá, y se toma como singular, digamos, si lo mencionamos como par, a pair of shoes. Ah, ok. okay. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Any other? Ok, now that we have defined the, this uh, vocabulary, uh, we have a conversation here. Um, Uh, this one is from the platform, as you can see here. Como pueden ver, esta es parte del material de la plataforma y eh, de esta no tenemos audio. Pero como ven ahí, está eh, siempre el tema there is y there are, es lo que ven en negrita. So, um, I'm going to read the conversation. Se las voy a leer. Y pues, um, pues no tenemos audio de ella. So I'm going to read that for you and then we're going to practice it. Uh, in this, as you can see, the objective is to be able to ask and tell people the specific location of places and directions surrounding my workplace. Siempre tiene, vamos a estar... Um, Diciendo las direcciones, locaciones, usando there is, there are, y también haciendo preguntas. Is there? Are there? So, vamos a, a cubrir acá el material de la plataforma y pues luego vamos a ampliar con más ejercicios, eh, con audios, listening y más eh, con la estructura de there is, there are en sentences 
oraciones sin preguntas y también las preposiciones del lugar. So, let's begin. Uh, listen, and yes, it's Will and Tanya. It's two people talking, okay? So, I begin. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't live here. Don't worry, there are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building in Main Street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interviews there. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, do you have any question about the vocabulary, pronunciation? Okay. And better. Questions? Mel Melbourne. El significado Melbourne. Melbourne es el, el, el nombre del edificio. En Melbourne, eh, building es edificio. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Teacher, can you repeat the, the sec, second the sentence of will, please? A girl, this one, a yes. girl. Okay. Yes. A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. One more time, a girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. Esa palabra building, la uno se pronuncia, acuérdense, es building, la edificio, building, building. No pronunciamos la U, solo es building, building on Main Street, Main Street. Okay, um, any other question about pronunciation, vocabulary? Okay, vamos a repetir. Ustedes pueden repetir en casa. Recuerden, podemos usarlo siempre con los micrófonos off por eh, aquello de los eh, ruidos o atrasos con el internet. Hello, can you help me? Where is the mailboard building? I don't live here. Don't worry, there are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interviews, sir. 
Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay, volunteers to role play. Eduardo, someone to help Eduardo, Fatima. Okay, thank you so much, Eduardo and Fatima. You can start, Eduardo. Okay. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't live here. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interview there. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay, excellent job. Thank you so much, Fatima and Eduardo. Would you like to change roles now? Switch roles? Okay. okay. Hello. Can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't leave her. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl, a girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it. It's down the it's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I had to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have some interview there. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay, pretty good. Just to review this word, here. Here. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Fatima and Eduardo. Uh, do we have two more volunteers? Corina and someone else to help Corina. I volunteer to role play with Corina. Thank you, Lilibet. Okay, let's start, Corina. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building, I don't live here. Don't worry, there are four, four buildings. Which one do you need? A girl told me to go to the building on Main Street. I know it, it's down the street on the left side. Thanks, I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers on the building between May and King Street. I have some interviews. Dear, thank you again. Bye bye. Okay, just the words to review. And this one is else. Else. Uh huh. The e, la e al final no se pronuncia else. And then interviews. Interviews. Interview. Excellent. Now let's change. Let's switch roles. Uh, hello. Can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't live here. Here. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? I just told me to go to the building on the main street. I know it is down the street on the left side. Thanks. I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? There are a lot of training centers of the 
building between May and King Street. I have some interviews there. Thank you again. Bye bye. Okay, very well done. Muy bien hecho, eh, Corina and Lilibet. And, and that is the purpose of practicing a lot. Practicando, practicando, de repente se acuerdan y se corrigen ustedes mismos. So that's nice. Eso es, eh, con práctica van a lograrlo. Y si se dan cuenta, solo es una o dos palabritas. So you're doing a good job. Lo están haciendo súper bien. Eh, gracias por eh, participar. No sé si uh, quisiera alguien más hacer roleplay. Dos más. No, Blanca. Ok, uh, volunteer to practice with Blanca. Volunteer to roleplay with Blanca. A volunteer to practice with Blanca. Okay, so everybody just um I need five and then the rest is just listening. Um I I can practice with Blanca. Okay, thank you so much, Eduardo. That's nice of you. Okay, you can start, Blanca. Hello, can you help me? Where is the member building? I don't like her. Don't worry. There are four buildings. Which one do you need? I need to, need to do a building on May Street. I know it. It's down the street on the left side. Thanks. I had to say to so many something. L is there a training center? There are a lot of training. Uh, there are a lot of training centers on the building between Main and King Street. I have so interviewed. They thank you. I thanks again. Bye bye. Mama. Okay, good. Uh, just remember, it says live. That should be this word, live. Because it, live is a vivir, pero si decimos live, es como si algo en vivo, algo en, 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 en el momento. So, yes. So, this is live. In this case, we use it and pronounce it as live. So, thank you so much. Now, let us switch. Vamos a cambiar. Now, you start, Eduardo. Okay. Hello, can you help me? Where is the Melbourne building? I don't live here. Don't worry, they are for building why on the unit. Agir told me to go to the building on the main street. No, it's on the street on the left side. Thanks, I have to ask you something else. Is there a training center? They are a lot train center on the building between my and King Street. I have some interview there. Thank you again. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Blanca. Thank you, Eduardo. And yes, the last one was between. Between. Very good job. Thank you so much for practicing Blanca and Eduardo for helping us. Now, about this conversation, we have uh, three questions. The, um, the first one said, um, how many Melbourne buildings are there? Where is the building where we want to go located? How many training centers are there and where are they? I'll give you some time for you to answer these three questions and then we're going to review your answers.
Okay, question number one. How many buildings are there? Volunteer to answer that question? There are four buildings. Excellent. There are four buildings. Number two, where is the building where we want to go located? It's down the street on the left side. That's correct. And the last question, how many training centers are there and where are they? There are a lot of training centers on the building between the main and the King Street. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your answers. You did an excellent job. Now, uh, as you can see, we have address and places says continue with unit four. How to use there is and there are plus quantifiers. Uh, Como usar el there is y el there are con los uh, quantifiers son como indicadores de cantidad, ¿verdad? Como por ejemplo decía, there are lots of training centers. Es que lot of es decir muchos. No es como una eh, cantidad específica, pero solo es como para dar una idea de cuánto en, 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 en cantidad. Eh, cuando es singular, recordamos que usamos there is. Y agregamos eh, si podemos a o an, dependiendo, ¿verdad? Si recuerden esa fue de las primeras clases que tuvimos, cuando es an y cuando es a. Eh, tenemos ejemplos aquí. There is an ATM across the street. There is a recruitment center on the corner of Roosevelt Street and the First Avenue. Y para ser negativa, there is no o there isn't a clothing factory around the corner. Eh, con los singulares, pues, no podemos usar, pues, es singular, ya se sabe que es uno, ¿verdad? Entonces, lo único que podemos usar como quantifier es el artículo a o an. Eh, there are. Eh, there are es para plurales, como decíamos el día de ayer, cuando vamos a hablar de la existencia de más de una cosa, ¿verdad? Eh, es para plurales. There are y la cantidad a lot of. Ese es el quantifier, va así, a lot of. Para decir bastantes. There are a lot of companies down the street. Ahí está diciéndonos que hay muchas compañías calle abajo o abajo de la calle. El some es para decir algunos. Algunos. Uh, there are some supermarkets on the right and left side of the street. Y pues eh, para ser negativo. There are no hospitals on various streets. Eh, solo ponemos el no después del no. Eh, no sé si tienen alguna pregunta con esto. Dudas, preguntas. Si no hay preguntas, entonces podemos eh, pasar a completar el ejercicio que tenemos ahí. Complete the exercise with there is or there are and a quantifier. Vamos a ir completando con there is, there are y podemos usar el quantifier que está ahí en, en paréntesis. Igual si es negativo, ahí tienen en paréntesis el no. Eso nos indica que vamos a hacer la oración en negativo.
Oh, all right. Uh, volunteer for number one. What do you have? Marketing presentation across the street in the morning. There is a marketing presentation across the street in the morning. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, number two, business workshops down the street. There are some business workshops down the street. Excellent, Karina. There are some business workshops down the street. Excellent. Number three, recruitment centers around my building. There are no. Excellent, Blanca. There are no recruitment centers around my building. Excellent job. Number four. Perdón, teacher. En la tres, igual podría ser there's no. Uh, there is no, porque es plural. Centers. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, Thank there you. are no recruitment centers. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Es centros de reclutamiento. Yo creo que tal vez por ahí se hubo confusión porque el plural, ajá, es centros. Centro de reclutamiento. Es como, ah, usted que, como leer al revés. <laughs> uh, yes. Four. A volunteer for number four. Store on the corner of Roosevelt Street and Second Avenue. There isn't. Okay, there isn't. Excellent. There isn't. Uh, there isn't a store on the corner of Roosevelt Street and Second Avenue. So there isn't. Um, and we can add a, a, uh, a store or any. Any también es un quantifier. There isn't any. Es como se utiliza cuando se están haciendo oraciones negativas. Eh, any. No, se puede poner ahí. Eso, vamos a ver estos más adelante. Solo ahorita solo como por información general. <laughs> Five banks behind the factory I work. There are some banks behind the factory I work. Excellent. Thank you so much. There are some banks uh, behind the factory I work. Como ahí no nos dieron el quantifier, está bien poner some. Y si pusieron a lot of, también es válido. Um, y la número seis que hice one. <laughs> What do you have? And it's a building around the corner. Um, there is a Ransa building around the corner. Excellent. There is an Arensa building around the corner. Y en vez del N, también pudiesen poner one. There is one Arensa building around the corner. Así que si lo tienen con N o con one, it's correct. Thank you so much. Uh, before we continue, uh, vamos a pasar asistencia. Vamos a chequear y luego continuamos. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Andrea Marisol Alemán. Present. Thank you. Blanca Luz Jovel. Present. Thank you. Carolina Beatriz Espalante. Present. Thank you. Claudia Stephanie Funes. Corina Yamilet Alfaro. Present. Thank you. Eduardo Luis Santillana. Present. Thank you. Edwin Martin Montoya. Present. Thank you. Fátima Claribel Majano. Present. Thank you. Irvin Alexis Aguirre. Jacqueline Michelle Guevara. Catherine Stephanie Perez. Present. Thank you. Laura Regina. Lily Betel Carmen Alfaro. Present. Thank you. Luis Omar Ortiz. María Guadalupe Mexicano. Presente. Thank you. Natalie Mireya. Presente. Thank you, Guadalupe. Natalie Mireya. Eh, Rosalinda Portillo. Uh, Xiomara Marisela Mariona. Present. Thank you. Okay, let us continue with the today's content. Okay, well, to continue with today's class and our contents to be covered today, we have um this. Um, is to describe how many and others working places areas look like. So we're going to be using adjectives. Do you remember what are they? Que es un adjetivo. Do you remember? Um, no recuerdan que es un adjetivo. Un adjetivo es lo que describe un nombre. Y es que decíamos que nombres eh, es todo lo que nos rodea es un noun. Es decir, niño, gato, cocina, computadora, taza, lápiz. Todo, todo, todo es un noun. Entonces, eh, si se recuerdan, regresando allá por tercero o cuarto grado, nombres, nombres comunes. También veíamos adjetivos y todo. Y de aquí viene la parte interesante porque a veces pensamos, o hay gente que dice, no, es que en inglés como que se dicen al revés las cosas. Y no es así todo el tiempo. Es, es solamente cuando hay un adjetivo involucrado. Entonces, eh, por eso venía el, el tema, ¿verdad? Que si sí, sí, recuerdan que es un adjetivo, si no, eh, no hay problema, lo recordamos ahorita. Nombres hay muchos eh, y para darnos eh, idea de, de una idea más clara de los nombres, para eso están los adjetivos, ya que como lo, lo vamos a traer a la memoria, un adjetivo es lo que describe a ese nombre, lo que lo hace diferente, lo que lo hace especial. Ok. Veamos esta oración. Pongámosle, there is a, a house on the corner. Aquí, esa es una oración normal. Ahí traigo el there is a house on the corner, en la esquina. ¿Qué dice esta oración? 
hay una casa en la esquina. ¿Me pueden decir cuál es el noun? De casa. La casa. Ajá. Entonces, eh, la casa. Ese es el noun. Es un nombre común. Entonces, ¿qué viene a mi imaginación? No sé, una casa, pero una idea vaga, ¿no? Nada especial. Eh, pero si decimos... There, ahí, vamos. Si sí, um, there is a big house on the corner. Oh, ya tengo una mejor idea de la casa, ¿verdad? Entonces me está diciendo que hay una casa grande. Ok. There is a big house. Entonces ya mi mente ya empieza a imaginársela, ya que ya hay algo que la está describiendo. No es cualquier casa, es una casa grande. Entonces este es el adjetivo y este es el noun. Entonces siempre que hay un adjetivo involucrado, es el adjetivo va primero, ¿verdad? Entonces eh, es lo contrario a nosotros como hablamos en español. Eh, hay... Una, diría, casa grande en la es, esquina. Hay una casa grande en la esquina. Entonces, primero decimos el noun, que sería casa, y luego decimos lo que la describe, que es grande, ¿verdad? En inglés se dice primero el adjetivo y después se menciona el noun. Ese es el único caso en que primero se dice, lo sentimos como que es al revés pero no es toda la vida que se habla al revés, sino que solo es cuando hay involucrado algún adjetivo. Entonces, ¿hay preguntas? Tengo la camisa negra. Vale, decimos camisa negra. Ok. Este es el noun. Y también, este es el adjetivo. También los colores son adjetivos. Entonces, si yo digo una camisa, you know, es una idea demasiado general. Pero si ya digo el color, hay una descripción, hay algo que la está haciendo diferente a todo lo que me pude haber imaginado. Y es que el color. Entonces, igual. A black shirt. A black shirt. So, yes, primero siempre va a ir lo que la describe y luego el nombre como tal. Questions? No questions? No. Ok, so we continue. Entonces, vamos a um, describir lugares de trabajo o áreas de trabajo. Describe how my and other working places areas look like. Y para eso tenemos eh, descripciones acá de dos personas. Mr. Paz y Mr. Agu Mrs. Aguilar están describiendo sus lugares de trabajo. Uh, read the descriptions of Mr. Paz and Mrs. Aguilar's workplaces. Can you guess where they work? Well, veamos. Uh, con la de Mr. Paz, it says, there is a beautiful lobby. There are comfortable rooms. There is a huge parking lot. There are three high-tech elevators. Are they new for you? Es este vocabulario nuevo? Or, do you know the meaning of those adjectives? Uh, high tech is similar to de alta gama, alta tecnología. Exacto, yes. High tech, alta tecnología, alta gama, correct. Any other question? A huge. Es amplio. Amplio. Uh -huh. Un lugar amplio, grande. Uh -huh. Amplio, huge.
Any other question? Narrow, ¿qué significa? Eh, narrow es lo opuesto de huge. Si huge es amplio, narrow es estrecho. Veamos los de Mrs. Aguilar. There is a narrow reception area. Sería una área de recepción estrecha. There are two dirty dining rooms. There is an ugly photocopy center. And there are small offices. So, any other question about Mrs. Aguilar or Mr. Past descriptions? No question? No question. Okay. So um, here the exercises is like uh, the answering this question. Uh, how does Mr. Paz describe his workplace? ¿Cómo describe el señor Paz su lugar de trabajo? Aquí lo tenemos, es como... Es... <laughs> Ahí está. <laughs> y luego, ¿qué piensa el señor... Uh, ¿Qué piensa la, la señorita o señora, bueno, Mrs. señora? ¿Qué piensa la señora Aguilar acerca de su trabajo? Aquí no dice, no sé qué piensa ella, pero puedo imaginar que no le gusta. Entonces, ¿y en cuál de los dos les gustaría trabajar? Yo creo que es obviamente donde trabaja Mr. Paz. ¿verdad? Entonces, no vamos a darle tiempo a esto porque se me hace que podemos aprovecharlo en algo cómo describir nuestro propio lugar de trabajo. Para eso vamos a utilizar estos, hay más adjetivos. Eh, aquí ya vimos los que están acá, ¿verdad? Beautiful, para describir un lugar podemos decir beautiful, comfortable, huge, uh, narrow, dirty, ugly, small. Aquí hay más vocabulario. Eh, y tenemos, los tenemos separados en positive y negative adjectives. Como positive, tenemos comfortable, huge, nice, illuminated, es como iluminado, ¿verdad? Eh, eh, tenemos narrow and small, disgusting and smelly. Ahí están eh, divididas. Eh, ¿Tienen alguna pregunta? ¿Alguno de estos es nuevo? Y yes, es smelly. Smelly es como apestoso. Ah, oh, ok. Es smelly, es hediondo o apestoso. similar, es stinky. Ajá, uh -huh. y yes, son sinónimos, es sinónimo, oh, stinky, okay. es okay. smelly. Uh -huh. Y creo que solo ese que quizás sería el, el, el nuevo, ¿verdad? Smelly. Ok, as it, dice, uh, there are comfortable rooms. There is a huge parking lot. There are nice places to rest. There is an illuminated training room. There is a narrow reception area. There are small offices. There is a disgusting kitchen area. There is a smelly living room. Now, could you describe your workplace? I'll give you some time for you to write a brief description of your workplace. Me voy a dar tiempo para que escriban una pequeña descripción de su lugar de trabajo. Pueden, eh, recuerden utilizar there is y there are. Uh, y luego, pues, pueden utilizar adjetivos también. Um, 
Uh, so, for example, uh, if I say I work in an academy, and uh, if I describe the academy, because yes, I'm working from home now. <laughs> uh, the academy, I can say there are, uh, no los he contado, pero ajá, uh -huh. there are many classrooms, hay muchos, or there are a lot of classrooms. Um, there is uh there is an air conditioner in each in each classroom there is a small reception area um there is a beautiful and clean cafeteria um what else there is a small parking lot and um, I think that would be pretty much. <laughs> okay, so describe your workplace. Les voy a dar tiempo para que escriban una pequeña descripción de su lugar de trabajo. Recuerden usar there is, there are. Pueden utilizar eh, si es necesario los uh, quantifiers. O pueden usar cantidades exactas, como decir, hay dos oficinas. There are two offices or there are some offices, como gusten. Eh, y los adjetivos que están ahí también. Luego vamos a leer nuestras descripciones para compartir y revisar.
Okay, let's listen to some volunteers to share the descriptions of your workplaces. Uh, I, um, in the in the workplace in the workplace, there is a comfortable office. There is a small kitchen. There is a narrow locker area. There are illuminated spots. There is a huge parking lot. Okay, excellent job. Thank you so much for sharing, Eduardo. Um, anybody else? So we have Fatima, Lilibet, Edwin, Corina, Carolina, Yomara, Katherine. Anybody else to share the description? Thank you so much. Me falta todavía. No he terminado. Okay, uh, Lilibet. Yes. Eh, me corrijo porque tengo dudas en una. No sé si las he aplicado bien. Okay, not a problem. In my workplace, there are there are three medium cubicles. Uh, the there is a big reception area. Area. The kitchen room room is a little a little small, but it's very clean. There is a bathroom in the old office, and it is located in. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place <laughs> that there are two air conditioners, but this air, but, but this air conditioner is very, are very cool. Are very cool. Excellent. You did it great. I was going to say, ah, oh, a little, yeah, but you say a little small. So yeah, you completed and it's completely correct. Thank you so much, Lily. Great job. Está super bien. Cuando dijo, so a little kitchen, a little small. Ah, okay, a little small, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh-huh. Very good job. Now we have a Fatima. I work in the hospital. There is a cool area. There are many dressing rooms. There is a nice place. There is a big space. Okay, there is a big space for patients, for staff. For staff. Okay, excellent. And many dressing rooms. That sounds good. Is it very clean? It's a very. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Fatima. Anybody else? Andrea. Thank you so much, Andrea. Hi. Bueno, este, yo puse, it's a nice place. My office is comfortable. And we have a big desk. Eh, no sé si se pronuncia como escritorio. Yeah, big desk. So you can say a desk. O desk. si es su escritorio, desk. O se puede decir spot también. Ok. But so there are a small office on the principal building. And so the buildings are clean, but there are nice for center. But usually it's a smelly area. Ok. Wow, that's pretty... Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for participating. You. you did it great. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, 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 there is uh, 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 a center for persons. There is uh, ilumin 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 
There is a clean. There is a big kitchen. There are six bedrooms. Uh, they are a uh, garden. And la del uh, garden is uh, there is a garden or there are some gardens? Uh, there is there is all center the all persons. Okay, very good. That's enough, right? Like six bathroom in a workplace. That sounds good. Thank you so much, Carolina. Anybody else? Okay, well done. Thank you so much for sharing. Eh, gracias a todos por compartir su trabajo. Lo hicieron excelente. And that is what you're producing. Ya están produciendo eh, sus propios párrafos, oraciones. So that's very nice. Es muy bueno. Eh, pues han, han progresado bastante y espero que sigan así. Vamos a continuar entonces. Eh, con el ejercicio número 5. Complete the sentences using the words provided and the correct verb. Ok, al correcto verbo se refiere a there is o there are. Por ejemplo, en la una se dice small gym. Está singular. Entonces tendría que usar there is. Y luego completar con lo que me dice ahí, uh, singular, there is, ese sería el verbo correcto porque está en singular, en un gimnasio. There is a small gym. Ok. There is a small gym. Y así, tomando esto como ejemplo, vamos a continuar con el número dos, eh, la tres. En la cuatro. Licenciada, perdón que ya no terminé ni terminé de escucharle porque me vinieron a buscar, pero no sé si, si estaba bien lo que hice. Hasta donde la escuché, sí, estaba súper bien, Carolina. Solo no ah. la escuché bien la de los jardines, porque creo que de eso el perrito estaba ladrando como más. Eh, they are some gardens. Ah, there are some gardens. Ah, ¿Sí? Ok, está correcta. Sí, solo en esa tenía duda, pero todo sí se lo escuchó muy bien, Carolina. Muy bien, gracias. Uh -huh. Excelente.
Um, teacher, I have a question. Uh, unpleasant, it's like a... Uh, in, como incómodo. Unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Incómodo. Okay. Eh, pero, uh, perdón, ya vi a dónde estaba. Ese es más eh, um, incómodo. Es como, um, ok, tenemos comfortable, que comfortable significa cómodo. Lo opuesto es uncomfortable. Solo se le agrega un para decir uncomfortable. Unpleasant es que no son placenteros. Es pleasant es algo placentero. Unpleasant okay. es lo opuesto. Es no placentero. Eh, puede ser que sean sucios. que aunque no, Hay bathrooms que aunque no estén sucios huelen mal. O hay algo por ahí que no usualmente, ¿verdad? Eh, Está, deberían de estar limpios, uh, tal vez sin olores, por lo menos sin olores. Entonces, tal vez uh, de repente muy viejos, etcétera. Cosas que lo hacen ver y sentirse no placentero. Eh, lo paño. Yeah, ok, thank you. Uh -huh. no, para que un baño sea placentero de vez. Reunir un montón de requisitos. <ríe> Usualmente no es placentero ir a esos lugares. Bueno. En Tini. Es similar a. Tini es similar a, a, a narrow, como poco espacioso. Ah, ok, ok. Uh -huh. Es estrecho, poco espacioso, pequeño. Okay, let's see the number two. I, I guess this is, would be the two. I guess it's a three, four, five. Yes, new training rooms. What do you have in number two? Volunteer? There are, there are uh, new training rooms. Excellent, Corina. There are new training rooms. Good job. Thank you so much. Number three, clean cafeterias. Clean cafeterias. Yeah, there are clean cafeterias. Excellent. There are clean cafeterias. Thank you so much. Number four, smart meeting room. Smart meeting room. There it is. There is a smart meeting room. Okay, very good. Unpleasant bathroom. What? Corina? Uh, 
there there are a um um pleasant bathroom uh -huh. there are unpleasant bathrooms mm -hmm. um como es pleasant mm. como an unpleasant unpleasant un bathroom excellent thank you so much Corina and finally number six tiny cubicle There is tiny cubicle. Mm, yes, and we can add uh, the article a. Uh. Very good. Now, uh, to continue with the topic, we have uh, we're going to get back to the places and things. Do you remember the places vocabulary? El vocabulario de los lugares que veíamos en el material de la plataforma. Que veíamos City Hall. ¿Qué más había? Parte de City Hall. Park. Okay. Arrow Company. Arrow Company. A mall. Creo que había un mall. Church. A church. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Now here we have more places and things. Um, so we have, a, this is a matching exercise. Where can you get these things? Match the things with the places and then listen and practice. Este ejercicio lo tienen acá en el, en el PDF. Let's see. Vamos a hacer primero el matching y then listen and practice. So we have the list here, aspirin, bread, a dictionary, gasoline, a sandwich, stamps, a suit, a traveler's check. Any question about the vocabulary? Alguna pregunta con ese vocabulario? What does a suit mean? Ah, uh, okay. A suit. Esa palabra tiene se escribe igual, pero uh, tiene dos pronunciaciones diferentes dependiendo de lo que queramos eh, decir. Si decimos suite, así como se ve ahí, a suite, nos referimos a una habitación, a una habitación de, pues, puede ser en un hotel, a suite. O como hay gente que también así le llama una especie de apartamento, o tiene un su suite. Yes, suit. Pero eh, pronunciado como suit es un traje. Es un traje de, de aquí. Aquí se refiere a un traje. Un traje puede ser chaqueta, falda, un conjunto de chaqueta, pantalón, un traje. A suit. Aquí lo estamos usando como un traje. A suit. Ahí sería que no se pronuncia la I, solo suit. Suit, ajá. Si nos referimos al traje, a la ropa, es suit. Suit. Any other question about the vocabulary? No more questions? Okay, and then you have the places. So you say letter A, a post office. Letter B, a drugstore. Letter C, a gas station. Letter D, a department store. Letter E, bank. 
letter F, a bookstore. Letter G, a coffee shop. And letter H, a supermarket. Uh, do we have questions about this uh, place's vocabulary? Pregunta sobre este vocabulario de los lugares. No questions? The okay. a, a post office is como correo. Sí, el correo o una oficina postal. Ajá, correcto. Thank you. And so uh, now you can uh, match the places with the things. For example, where can I get an aspirin? ¿Dónde puedo obtener una aspirina? Ahí tenemos letter B. In a drugstore. En una farmacia. In a drugstore. Where can I get bread? De estos lugares, where can I get bread? At supermarket. Aha, uh -huh. so you type here H. Again, la H is a supermarket. Mm -hmm. And you will do the same with the rest of them. Have you finished matching the places with the things? Yes, I'm finished. Okay, so we said that one is B, 
Uh, for two, we said H. Now a dictionary. What do you have in a dictionary? A letter F. Letter F. That is correct. Number four. Uh, letter C. Letter C. That is correct. Number five. Uh, letter G. Letter G. Correct. And number six. A. A. Yes. And number seven. D. Correct. And finally, A. Travelers. Check. E. Letter E. E. Excellent. Those answers are correct. Um. Now, let's listen so that you can check and also listen for pronunciation. Teacher, no sé si es mi inter, pero no escucho nada. Ok, um, sorry, voy a ponerlo partiendo solo. Amps at a post office. Unit 13. Can you you can't now? miss it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Okay, okay. Page 86, exercise 1, word power, places and things. Part A. Where can you buy these things? Match the things with the places. Then listen and practice. 1. You can buy aspirin at a drugstore. 2. You can buy bread at a supermarket. 3. You can buy a dictionary at a bookstore. 4. You can buy gasoline at a gas station. 5. You can buy a sandwich at a coffee shop. 6. You can buy stamps at a post office. 7. You can buy a suit at a department store. 8. You can buy traveler's checks at a bank. Okay. Now, after this exercise, we have a listening. It says, I need a swimsuit. Okay, so uh, for this listening, uh, I don't know if you printed the material. If not, I'll give you a chance. Les voy a dar tiempo para que hagan como este cuadrito para los que no tienen impreso el material, vamos a escuchar y tenemos que completar esta información. What y where. ¿Se recuerdan? What es qué. Where sería dónde. Vamos a escribir también los nombres. Jean, Mom, Dad, and Mike. Luego vamos a escuchar y a uh, completar qué es lo que necesitan y dónde lo van a comp comprar. Por ejemplo, Jean en la conversación menciona que necesita un traje de baño, a swimsuit. Ahora necesitaríamos nada más completar a dónde va a comprar el traje de baño. Luego, igual, ¿qué necesita mamá? ¿A dónde lo va a comprar? Dad y Mike, the same. 
Les voy a dar tiempo para que escriban. Eh, y luego vamos a hacer el listening. Ok, I'll play the recording. Voy a poner el audio. Lo voy a poner dos o tres veces para que completen la información. Recuerden, vamos a poner qué es lo que necesita cada persona y dónde lo van a comprar. Page 87, exercise 2, listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 1. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. Can I go with you? I need to get some things, too. 2. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. 3. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. Four. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Page 87, Exercise 2, Listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 1. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. 
Can I go with you? I need to get some things too. Two. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. Three. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. Four. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Page 87, Exercise 2, Listening. I need a new swimsuit. Part A. Listen to the Anderson family's conversations. What do they need? Where are they going to get the things? Complete the chart. 1. Jean, are you going to come to the beach with us tomorrow? Yes, but I need a new swimsuit. I'm going to go to a department store this afternoon. Maybe I can find one. Good. Can I go with you? I need to get some things, too. 2. Are you going to look for some clothes, Mom? Oh, no. I'm going to go to the supermarket. What do you need? I just need some cookies for tomorrow. We're going to take a picnic lunch to the beach. Oh, good. Can you get chocolate cookies? Sure. 3. What's wrong, Dad? I have a terrible headache. Oh, that's too bad. Do we have any aspirin? I can't find any in the house. No, we don't. Sorry. Hmm. I need some right now. I'm going to go to the drugstore and get some. 4. Where are you going, Mike? To the bookstore. What for? Do you need a book? No, I want a magazine. I need something to read at the beach tomorrow. Are you going to walk? No, drive. Hey, where's the car? Your father has it. He's at the drugstore. Did you complete the chart? Yes, I complete. Okay, so what does... Well, Jean needs a swimsuit. Where is she going to get it? Uh, department store. At a department store? Okay. Uh, what about mom? Uh, mom, some, uh, some cookies and they buy at uh, the supermarket. Mm -hmm. What about and, dad? And dad, uh, he has any aspirin? And he buy a drugstore. Uh-huh. Mike? Mike needs a magazine and, and he buys uh, in the bookstore. Okay. Yes. Excellent job, Eduardo. Your answers are correct. Y para los demás, si tienen las mismas respuestas, son correctas. Y ahí las pueden ver en el cuadrito que tienen ahí. Uh, Jean? swimsuit in a department store mom some cookies at the supermarket dad aspirin at the drugstore and mike a magazine at the bookstore i hope that you have the same answers espero que hayan tenido las mismas respuestas how was the listening lo sintieron difícil so fácil how was it ¿Estarían todas buenas? ¿Alguna que les faltó? ¿Alguna que no entendieron?
No. Yo la de la aspirin drug drug. Esa me costó como, como callarle que esa era la. El lugar o, o, o la. Ok. Ahí, esa. Only one, pero um, entonces esa la dejó sin responder. Sí, esa sí la dejé sin responder. Ok, no hay problema. No, pero una, that's fine. Si respondió las demás y estaban buenas, es, está bien. So listening, I think es... Para mí, creo que listening es la habilidad que cuesta un poquito más de desarrollar, pero eh, todo es práctica y el oído pues se va acostumbrando. Y también el vocabulario. Por eso si fue todo el vocabulario que estaba en el listening es lo que vimos en el ejercicio anterior. Entonces eso también ayuda un poco. Eh, ahora que están la mayoría que se... Um, Creo que hay un poquito más de la mitad del grupo les de, de la encuesta de satisfacción. Es uno de los requisitos que se deben de cumplir para eh, obtener su certificado, ¿verdad? Eso es una, la plataforma, como mínimo recuerden, 80%. Y los ejercicios recuerden que los pueden eh, corregir. Si de repente eh, tienen alguna respuesta mala, la pueden corregir hasta que les salga buena para que no les afecte eh, su puntaje, lo mismo pueden corregir los ejercicios de los exámenes recuerden que terminamos el viernes y debe de estar la plataforma completa con un mínimo del 80% el segundo requisito es su asistencia, el tiempo de conexión, verdad, mínimo 80% y la tercera es una encuesta de satisfacción, esta encuesta ustedes van a recibir un, las instrucciones probablemente un día antes tipo jueves o tal vez el mismo viernes. Esta encuesta se llena durante la clase porque es requisito para que obtengan su eh, certificado el que llenen esa encuesta. Es parte de los tres requisitos y solo hay chance de hacerla una vez. Entonces, si usted la hace y hay algo malo eh, con ella, eh, la rechazan y pues ya no hay manera de, de deshacer eso. Eh, Insafore bien estricto en ese aspecto, así es que esa encuesta no la vayan a hacer ustedes, aunque reciban los enlaces antes, tienen que esperar para que la hagamos todos juntos, sobre todo porque eh, imagino que es primera vez que van a, a, a llenarla y a veces hay preguntas, y, um, información que tiene que ser bien específica, eh, detallada, entonces no nos podemos equivocar. Entonces, para evitar errores, o minimizar el riesgo de, es que la hacemos durante la última clase. Así que eso les quería mencionar sobre la encuesta de satisfacción. Eh, lo voy a estar repitiéndoles el anuncio durante la semana, por los que no se han podido conectar el día de hoy. ¿verdad? Entonces, eso sería todo. Eh, mañana continuamos practicando. Eh, por ahorita, pues, los dejo ya descansar. Y espero que descansen bien. Los veo mañana. See you tomorrow. Good night. Tomorrow. I'll get to sleep. Morning. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sleep well.